All right, so I've been pretty pissed that F1 got rid of uh, third cars a while ago. I've been pissed for over a decade at this. Um, F1 needs third cars, quite frankly. It needs it. Um, there's gonna come a race sometime, somewhere along the way, be it wet or dry, who knows. But there's gonna come a race somewhere along the way where a, uh, a Belgium 98 occurs. And like, you know, and 75% of the grid, you know, crash into each other. And that's gonna be a real problem because there's no spare cars nowadays. There's none. Yeah, you can, you, there's enough spare parts to build two other cars while at the weekend, but are, are, are the teams gonna build, put a car together in the time it takes to clear up a red flag incident? I don't see that happening. And we've lost a whole lot of drivers because now, of course, I get it, there might be some, I guess, purist arguments, even though, like, if you're doing the whole purist the angle for F1, like, you need spare cars there if you're going to be purist. But there's a the whole purist argument of, um, oh, if a driver crashes, then, you know, their race should be over. I, I, I hear you. I hear you. That's not the F1 I grew up with, so I can't, <laughs> so I can't, I can't listen to that at all. Now, of course, Outside of the spare cars, right? That's not really the argument for third cars. The real argument for third cars is that they provide opportunities for young drivers to demonstrate they can mix it with race seats in practice, right? I mean, people forget very quickly Vettel came through on this system and Robert Kubica, of course, before his, before his, his Israeli incident, right? But Vettel and Kubica came through in this third car system, third car and free practice system. And wow, let me tell you, if you if if you if you saw Vettel coming through, wow, what a driver. What a crazy young driver he was. You you know, when you saw him step into the car free practice for BMW, oh, BMW sold at the time, yeah. You saw him do that, step into the car, you were like, oh this kid, this kid has something about him. Oh he definitely has something about him. They better put him in the race seat real quick or, you know, someone's going to snatch him. Lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> Lo and fucking behold, that's exactly what happened. But Vettel, he was immense. Immense. You know, young driver getting some free practice runs out. He was immense. He was often topping the timesheets well ahead of the other BMW Sauber drivers. I think one of them was Cubis but I might not have been. I might be fibbing there. But he was well ahead. Well ahead in free practice times. And, you know, you would sit there, the layman in the audience, and you would wonder quite sincerely, how was this kid on the race seat? You know, what, what are they seeing there on the simulator at base? But as you can see, they were able to put him in the third car for free practice and, well, well, the rest is history, isn't it? But one thing that's not really appreciated about when we still had third cars and free practice is you get more time to eye test the young driver. A lot more time. And there's been the death of the eye test lately, I suppose. That has been something that's occurred, although you end up with some drivers who are just so good that yeah, they become the eye test. You got Lewis Hamilton and Verstappen Leclerc. They become the eye test, as it were. But I, I digress. There has been the death of the eye test in the F1 fandom slash community. I'm not quite pleased with it. It's probably to do with uh, modern politics to some way. So uh, you know, it's not really worth delving into. But more time to eye test young drivers is vital. It's vital. Why is it vital? Because the young driver tests are, are frankly pathetic. They're just pathetic. There's not one driver who has gone through those tests that has found any real tangible value in them. All the value that they've had to get, all the experience that they've had to get, doesn't come from the young drivers. They go to a, a, a back market team, you know? They go to a back market team. Be it Alfa Romeo with Leclerc, be it Williams with George Russell. You know, you have to go to a back market team too to get to get some F1 experience, to get some mileage, to get mileage in the cars, right? Before there was free practice sessions, <coughs> teams had a third car. <coughs> um, Ferrari never ran a third car. 
That was an interesting observation from back in the day. Ferrari never ran a third car. But McLaren did run a third car and they would often put uh, Pedro De La Rosa in the car. I think on one occasion they put Gary Paffert, doesn't matter. But they would often put Pedro in the car, he would just be doing uh, you know, simulation runs while, while, the, while the actual race drivers, Kimi and Montoya at the time I believe, while they were just doing their weekend, their weekend program. All right? But if you replace Pedro De La Rosa, because the, the, McLaren very well could have put uh, Lewis Hamilton in that third car seat and they would have been able to see what he was able to do in free practice sessions. Now, of course, they, <clears throat> of course, they wanted him to get the whole GP2 year under his belt, so that's what happened. Fair game. It's neither here nor there. But do you know, there were no young driver tests back then. Hamilton never had no young driver tests. He just came on, on experience, and that was that. For Stappen, he went uh, to Toro Rosso. He had a year and a half. A year and a third, I should say. At Toro Rosso. And that really helped him there. No, I wasn't just a year at Toro Rosso. I'm, I'm feeling that it was two years at Toro Rosso. Two years of, and, and, and some change. Two years and change at Toro Rosso. But he got all his, his mileage under his belt at Toro Rosso. Now you see Red Bull might have been able to actually throw him into the, 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 the main team, the first team as it were, if third cars were a thing and you had 17 year old Verstappen getting some mileage in, in the main team, you know, over some, over some race weekends, and everyone would have been eye testing him there like, ooh, who's this kid? Ooh, you know? He's going faster than, he's just about matching Ricardo, he's just about matching Betts. Who was this kid? He's 17. It would have been, it would have really been something. And it's very likely Red Bull wouldn't have even bothered with the, the Toro Rosso route. Just like uh, McLaren with, with Hamilton. There was no need to make a deal with the Williams or something to so put Hamilton in the car. He had passed the eye test, especially off his GP2 year. But I digress. I digress. Formula Two is not is not like GP Two at all, at all. But I digress. It's not it's not worth delving into that for this episode. Bring back third cars. They're really needed. They served quite a useful function, and without them, we're kind of we're kind of having to suffer some really bad drivers more often than not. Anyway, on with you there. Hey, old Breezy, let me show you how to keep the dice rolling when you're doing that thing over there. Hey, 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 let's go! Cause I'm feeling like I'm running and I'm feeling like I gotta get away, get away, get away. Better know that I don't and I won't ever stop cause you know I gotta win every day, day. Go! See if you really wanna pop me, go! just know that you will never pop me. Go! And I know that I gotta be a little cocky. Go! You ain't never gonna stop me. Every time I come a nigga gotta set it, then I gotta go and then I gotta get it, then I gotta blow and then I gotta shut it. Any little thing a nigga think that he be doing cause it doesn't matter cause I'm gonna dead it, dead it. Then I'm gonna murder everything and anything about it. Let's go. See the way we on it and we all up in the race. And you know we gotta go not try to keep up with the pace. And we struggling and hustling and sell it and get it and we 